Roman Catholic churches had an ornamented receptacle or cabinet on or above an altar in which a pyx containing the reserved sacrament was kept. From then on, the tabernacle, as it was called, could be placed anywhere in the apse. The tabernacle in early colonial churches was usually made of wood. There are beautifully carved Molave ones still extant, although a majority of them have lost their original polychrome and gilding. As towns became more prosperous and churches became bigger, tabernacles too were upgraded and silver became the material of choice for the richer parishes. This particular piece, which must have belonged to a rich and large church, still has its original wooden carcass enveloped in beaten silver. It stands on a base designed to resemble the facade of a Baroque church with two columns on either side of an arched doorway. The whole ensemble stands on a silver base with a central projection and a series of receding planes so characteristic of Baroque architecture. A monstrance from the Latin monstrare to show is also known as an ostensorium, another Latin word with the same meaning. A vessel originally used during the Middle Ages for the public display of relics, it eventually was mainly used to display the consecrated Eucharist during the Eucharistic Adoration or Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament. In this ritual, the priest blesses the worshippers while holding aloft the ostensorium containing the host. Since the host was believed to be the body of Christ, it meant that it was Christ himself and not the priest who was giving his blessing. This large silver gilt monstrance that once belonged to an important and wealthy church is completely decorated from top to bottom with finely executed embossed and chased patterns and motifs that show the skill of Filipino silversmiths. The monstrance stands on a circular base and, with all the surfaces of the entire piece decorated in elaborate detail, is a rare example of horror vacui in Philippine art. This ivory head of an unidentified female saint was made for a 1.2 meter statue that was attached to a mannequin and meant to be clothed. The face is somewhat Europeanized, but the bulging eyelids, which gives it a Philippine air, also gives an indication of the age of the piece. Bulging eyes, when extremely prominent, indicate a 17th century date of manufacture, while slightly bulging eyelids, like the one shown here, are typical of those faces carved in the late 18th or early 19th centuries.